So the welds, I notice in your video, you show a lot of early images of the second gen cell with the, the laser weld on the anode end, right? And mm, it, yeah, okay. in the cell that you received, it looked a little bit like this. And I'll give these to, to Grace so she can do uh, sort of a close up for the, the viewers here. Um, but, you know, the one that you had, had what I would call the nine weld version. So there's two in a sort of a triangular arrangement with a, a you know, a kind of a, you know, Mercedes sign going out from there for the three additional welds. So that's, you know, six and three for nine in total. Yet in that pack, it was probably a 50-50 mix between nine welds and 12 welds. Yeah. And the one you show had only three and it was in a different shape. So I'm, I'm, Speaking out loud, wondering if this isn't some sort of a dynamic part of their assembly process where they try it with nine welds, and if it meets their criteria for probably resistance, uh, then they leave it. And if it fails, uh, then okay, let's put three more on it. And maybe that's how you get from nine to 12. Any insights how this has evolved? I mean, it went from three to nine to 12, and the pack we had was kind of commingled between nines and 12s. Wild speculation on my part, because I don't know what's going on there. And it was shocking for me to see that. What I think they did is they took the the most safe approach first. And they're like, okay, let's make a, <clears throat> maybe you just got lucky. Maybe there was the, sort of a transition period, transitioning period where they're moving from one number of welds to another number of welds. And you just got that pack. But either way, um, I see it as, okay, We'll start with this many welds and then we'll try to reduce it and see how much, see how that affects the resistance over time. Um, the fewer the welds, uh, uh, maybe the faster that you can produce these cells, let's get the production rate up, but we also have to take into account safety. So moving as fast as you can while also being safe, um, which, oh God, that's a whole cultural discussion about the way companies think about these things. But yeah, some, some company cultures like move fast and break things and you don't have to worry about safety. Other ones are too conservative, but it's, you know, if you can hit that sweet spot between a company culture that's let's move as fast as we can while being safe, that's, that's great. And so far Tesla has been succeeding with the 4680 packs. Um, but it surprised me that, um, that they would mix those different types of cells in the packs. Um, did you notice any specific pattern as to how those were placed or was it completely random where those th um, multiple different numbers of welds were placed within that pack? I would, that I would say it was perfectly random. Okay. And almost evenly distributed from the ones we got to look at, right? Okay. So um, it's just... It's new and different. It's part of the Gen 2 cell design. They got rid of the collector plate at the bottom. They welded the tabs directly to the can. When you pull that end of the can off and you look at it and you see kind of it grabs some of the copper and pulls it with it. And then you look really closely and you go, wow, those welds missed the copper in a lot of places. So then I started thinking, okay, maybe that's where you got the three additional welds. But how did they know to do that? Maybe it's part of a intermediate test. That was my hypothesis of that particular one. But oh, I just, so you you think it's the reverse? You think they might be increasing the welds uh, because they um, they didn't get enough contact? And to your point, these things should be electrically matched to each other, right? You would expect I'd get all nines or all twelves, right? But if it's indeed to match a, like a target or an ideal, then that would explain the commingling, in my view. So. <laughs> So do you think as long as they meet a minimum, um, like, I don't know, ohmic threshold or whatever it is in terms of resistance, uh, that they would just put those cells in the pack? Um, I, I think that would give them a good vote of confidence that the cell impedance would be what it's supposed to be at the final test. All right. But I would imagine if all those cells had like a slightly different impedance that it would dick around with the, sorry, um, mess around with the BMS <laughs> and it, it might have some issues there. Well, you know, the vast majority of the resistance that represents that impedance is, you know, part of the chemistry, right? And you want to expect that the welds are just a minimal contribution to that. So if you over weld it, it should only have a really minute effect on the total impedance. However, have too few and now you got a problem. 
And in fact, when we tested the first cell, the Gen 1 cell, um, it had that gasket at the bottom. And uh, it was easy to make the error of thinking, oh, I'll just connect the positive electrode on this side and the negative one on that side. And hey, there's voltage there. Look at that. Let's test it. Oh, it seems to work. And then let's pull some power of it and it dies. So yeah, you can't pull power out of the bottom of the, the can of that thing because it's not a solid electrical connection. But not unlike your 12-volt battery in your car with a loose terminal on it, you know, I turn my headlights on, it looks like it's working, but if I crank the engine, it dies like a rock because it opens up in a dynamic sort of way if, if you've got, uh, you know, uh, some questionable resistance that's high enough to get to most of your targets, but not high enough for the peak load. So, again, I think that's just belt and suspenders for them or call it belt and braces for those watching from international communities. Um, <laughs> how, oh, how much time do you have? Uh, we have about another half an hour, maybe 35 okay. minutes. Okay, because I, I don't want to mess up your flow of questions, but I like well, you're saying things that it's triggering uh, thoughts on my end. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, I didn't, uh, we, we couldn't test the resistance because it was a fully uh, discharged cell. So that was one thing I was curious about. Um, are you able to share or did you check uh, the resistance of the Gen 2 versus Gen 1 cell. I don't want you stepping into things that might be giving away the game from your report, but um, I was curious. You know, to be truthful, um, I was somewhat abstracted from the generation of the report, so uh, it's not fresh in my memory, um, but it would surprise me if we went into that sort of detail. Um, I could be wrong. Uh, that being the case, um, that's one of the things we're doing here at Monroe. We're trying to go from benchmarking and costing to adding some value and analyzing the performance of these systems. It, you know, it's a whole lot more interesting to talk about than the material construction. You know, how many pennies does it cost to make this little dime tab on the end of the cell? You know, it's um, kind of boring. So that was one of the things that brought me to Monroe was the hope of expanding that functionality here. And I've made an impact, but it's now caught a life of its own and and yeah in that particular report case i i got pulled out once i successfully extracted the live cells we needed to do the test so uh, sorry for the non-answer there but um they're keeping you busy in short you no know, that's just it you know i'm looking to you for all my insights here because i'm busy i'm projects up to my head mm -hmm. so um yeah that being, good. Yep. um Looking at what Tesla, circling back around to put a bow on what we were talking about with the different versions of the uh, the welds on the cells, to me, this gives me the impression that they have an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of confidence in what their requirements are and how the entire system works. Because that's, from my perspective, it's kind of bold. If you were, didn't have a lot of confidence in your understanding of how that pack comes together and what the requirements are, you know, you'd probably shy away from using different versions of the same cell within a pack. So, um, yeah, I found it impressive that they were able to do that. 